For your guacamole dip, avocados just $1.99 each. Save $6 on cooking good chicken wingets. $19.99 for a five pound bag. Hot deal on DiGiorno 12 inch pizzas, only $7.99. Save $1.40 on Lay's potato chips, $2.99 for a 6.5 ounce bag. For party dipping, Tostitos salsa or Lay's dips, $3.69 for a 15.5 ounce jar. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more Super Bowl specials. You can count on us. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Thursday, January 31st, 2019. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us. The government has launched its first phase of a wide-ranging education program designed to put Bermudians into financial technology jobs, also known as fintech. Unveiling the details of the plan today was Premier David Burt, who held a news conference at the Cabinet Office alongside some of the first participants of the education scheme. Mr. Burt noted that there is a growing number of tech-related businesses either incorporating here or planning to domicile here, and he wants to get Bermudians ready at no cost of their own. The emerging financial technology industry is coming to Bermuda, and the government wants Bermudians to get the first crack at the employment the industry will bring. The technology education programs have been designed to meet the needs of all sectors of the community, irrespective of an individual's experience level. The objectives of the plans are to First, enable all sectors of the community from primary school to workforce and beyond to become knowledgeable about the opportunities in the technology industry. Two, to enable all interested persons to acquire training and or certifications in order to be prepared and ready to assume specialized positions in the local fintech industry or related technology fields. It is expected that upon completion of the necessary training, participants will gain knowledge about fintech and gain specialized certifications, which include cybersecurity, smart contracts, and regulatory compliance. Mr. Burt said not only will the certifications allow Bermudians to get fintech jobs, but to also to start their own fintech companies if they choose. To date, 25 Bermudians have expressed a desire to work in fintech, and some of them are joining me here today. Thank you for coming. They have shown a genuine interest in the industry and are excited about the opportunity to get training in this first phase of the FinTech Business Unit's training and education program. We look forward to welcoming and helping others to learn, grow, and develop. Next week, Wednesday, February 6, at 12.30 p.m. and 5.30 p.m., Dr. Gina Tucker will be hosting a one-hour briefing session, which will be open to all Bermudians, regardless of age, who wish to learn more about the training opportunities that we made available. Interested applicants are encouraged to log on to BermudaJobBoard.bm and click on FinTech Education to register. Asked if FinTech certificate holders will be guaranteed a job with a FinTech company, the Premier explained, I cannot say that there's any guarantees that the government can provide, but what I can say from the experience of which we have, that there are companies that are coming to Bermuda and they always ask us for recommendations on employees that can be, that are available to work inside of their industries. We would have seen recent job advertisements that have been in the press and also persons that have already been hired. What we want to do is provide more persons the ability to seek those jobs. And if you want to gain a fintech certification, you don't have to worry about money. We have allocated $100,000 in this current budget year, and it is our view that um, access to higher education and training should not be impacted by your ability to pay. The government has the resources, and the government will put the resources in place. I specified that when we came into office and before the election, that education and the training of our uh, citizens will be our number one priority, and we're going to put our money where our mouth is. Again, if you're interested in learning more about fintech or training opportunities, log on to fintech.bm and bermudajobboard.bm. Coming up, more news and your latest weather forecast. Stay tuned. Hey, Smokey, let's get lunch from the Marketplace Food Court. You know what? That sounds good. They have oxtails, pumpkin, correct lamb, lamb and chicken, sweet and sour ribs, vegetable stir fry, and the variety goes on. Their chefs are good. They'll set you right off of all the good carbons. 
And don't forget the special dishes from the island. So it don't matter. Well, no matter what you feel like eating, Marketplace will have it. You know, it's quick, it's quality, and at prices you can count on. Visit us seven days a week. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Made for you daily at the Hamilton Marketplace Food Court. At Argus, our interest is you. Each of you. Around here, we know that when two people seem the same, they can have very different insurance needs. For their health. Home. Work. And future. Which is why we take the time to get to know you as an individual. So we can provide insurance coverage that fits your life. Because after all, our interest is you. From the very beginning, it was always our singular focus to do whatever it takes, use every possible resource to fight cancer, and never lose sight of the patients we're fighting for. Our cancer treatment specialists share the same vision. Experts from all over the world working closely together to deliver truly personalized cancer care. And these are the specialists we're proud to call our own. Expert medicine works here. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Appointments available now. Welcome back. Well, the government held a public a town hall meeting on its pre-budget report last evening as Finance Minister Curtis Dickinson and Junior Finance Minister Wayne Ferbert were on hand to answer questions. Mr. Dickinson sought to explain that nothing is yet cast in stone, but action must be taken to ensure Bermuda's economic success. It may not have been a packed house, but the turnout was nonetheless encouraging. Residents, including government and the opposition members of the House of Assembly, turned up to hear more from Curtis Dickinson, the Minister of Finance, about his proposals for the budget 2019-2020. Proposals which include a number of tax increases as well as new taxes suggested by the Tax Reform Commission. Among them, that concerning proposed tax on rental income, an issue Mr. Dickinson addressed almost out of the gates. The rent tax was a recommendation made by the Tax Reform Commission. We presented the idea to get your feedback. I have not decided on whether to implement the rent tax or at what threshold the rent tax will apply. My decisions will be informed by the inputs I get from you and other stakeholders. However, it was Wayne Ferbert, the junior minister of finance, who did most of the talking on the night. It was left to him to explain why the need for the proposed increase in additional taxes. So between 2008 and 2017, here's some facts. Next. 3,209 less Bermudians working since, since 2008. Next one. 3,513 less foreign workers since 2008. Here's a striking one. And why are we looking at raising taxes? Hit it again between 60 and 70 million dollars of revenue less per year. If we had that number, we wouldn't be talking around tax reform as much as we are talking. Among the audience members was Chris Ferbert, president of the Bermuda Industrial Union. He sought an explanation on the junior minister's comment. Looking at the junior minister's comments in relationship to the number of, of people that were employed in Bermuda, particularly in 2008, we had 40,000, as he said, 213. 2017, we're down about 34,000. But when we look at the revenue, revenue was 929 million in 2008, 2008. Revenue in 2017 is at 988 million. So even though we got less people, the revenue is still about the same in the workforce. So I'm not sure how we made up all that, all that shortfall. Second of all, I think that if 2018 where you're projecting a $67 million shortfall, what's the projected number for 2019, 2019-20, if you don't get any of these tax increases? The finance minister himself fielded that one. The, the, the shortfall will be a function of how much tax revenue I, I'm able to, re to raise. If we assume that they stay at 2018-19 levels, there's about a billion one is the estimate for this year. Um, with the package of taxes that are included in the pre-budget report, that goes to a billion one four zero, so about fifty million dollars of incremental revenue. We've discussed the fifty million dollar number in the pre-budget report. I am still evaluating whether that is the right number. I am actually actively thinking about making it a smaller number. 
so that the quantum of tax increases will be smaller than those that are shown inside the pre-budget report. Elsewhere, it was announced that the government proposes to set the total current account appropriation to somewhere in the region of $929 million, an amount equal to the budgeted expenditure approved for fiscal year 2018-2019. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Meanwhile, Shadow Finance Minister Nick Kemp is expressing deep concern in the wake of the pre-budget report town hall meeting. The opposition MP says the PLP government is devoid of new ideas to stimulate growth in the economy. The turnout at the pre-budget report meeting last night was somewhat shocking. There was, it was a full house. The mood of the attending public was was certainly not enthusiastic. I think both the attendance and the general tenor of the questions being posed to the to the Minister of Finance really spoke to the general public's discontent with PLP's economic performance to date. When you listen to the presentation that was uh, that was given as well as the answers to the questions posed, it, it really struck home that this government is completely bereft of ideas to stimulate the economy. It was um, ironic, really, that when asked about the America's Cup being highlighted in the pre-budget report as a positive thing for the Bermudian economy, the Minister of Finance lamented not having his own equivalent America's Cup in the foreseeable future. And therefore, he had to work with, and I quote, the hand he was dealt, which is an economy that's shrinking with no economic stimuli, even after 18 months in government, nothing's been found. And he's having to work with that hand and therefore tax everyone to close the, the, the deficit that, of overspend that government has. And Mr. Kemp argues that taxation is not going to make the grade. I'm not sure why government believes its only solution is simply to tax everyone into the ground. They somehow uh, have this, this belief that creative taxation can, can bring about a, a world of newfound prosperity when it's quite plain to see that it strangles business, slows the economy, and will make it even more difficult to, to, to raise money because there's going to be less people producing, um, producing benefits. When we look at the other side of the equation to closing the deficit, it's government spending. There was a Ministry of Government reform. There was a Committee of uh, Economic Efficiency, or uh, the Efficiency Committee, rather, that the Junior Minister of Finance sat on or chaired. And I'm not sure what's been produced from these things. There's been no public reports released. They're planning to spend the exact same amount of money as last year, but raise the tax burden on Bermudians by $50 million. I mean, it shows a complete disconnect connect between the sacrifice that's being pushed on to everyday Bermudians. Turning to weather news, an absolutely gorgeous day today thanks to a high pressure system in our area. Let's go to AccuWeather headquarters for the latest. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. We're glad that you're joining us here on ZBM. This AccuWeather forecast is brought to us by the good folks at the BFNM Insurance Group. I'm meteorologist Jeff Cornish, and uh, we do have uh, some active weather on the horizon as we look a little deeper down the road into Sunday and especially Monday. It looks very wet out there. We do have a front uh, nearby, though, and uh, there is a stripe of cloud cover. Not much moisture with it, though. Just a few uh, spotty showers are associated with this. You can see well to our west-southwest, there's a little batch of showers that has recently regenerated tied to the recent front. Uh, we're at 65 degrees, uh, then uh, temperatures are going to be falling a bit through the evening hours with that north wind following. Really, we've had a couple of fronts roll through, and uh, what's left over from what we might call an Arctic front is running out of gas as it approaches the area from the west. But we already have that wind from the north from the previous cold front, so temperatures are down a bit. Waves on the inside, one to two feet. On the outside, we have four to seven footers out there. Water temps hovering around 68 degrees. Upcoming tides, we have a high tide uh, uh, recently, and then low tide is at 11.35. So all evening long, the tide is heading back out. High tide again at 6.13 Friday morning, and then the tide will head out to, to a minimum at 105 on your Friday afternoon. Boating weather looks okay. 
there will be some spotty showers, just a stray shower here down to 57 degrees. And then as we uh, step ahead into Friday, it's a strong finish to the work week. Just a little cool with that north wind keeping temperatures down at around 65 degrees. So it's a cool spell, but at least we're fairly bright with intervals of sunshine in between the uh, periods of time in which clouds may block the view. Uh, in Trinidad, it's warm, 88 degrees there, dry. We do have some showers into Jamaica and Barbados, and uh, no tropical threats. Downright frigid air, though, remains into the northeastern United States and southeastern parts of Canada. Toronto with a high of 11 Fahrenheit. Very cold out there. New York City, cold, 23, some clouds. Boston, 24 for the high. Uh, recovering from the absolute coldest blast of the most recent few days. Had a few places in the Midwestern United States that had their all-time record low temperature set. So colder than any date in uh, recorded history, at least for the modern era. Uh, into Miami, showers are out there. And in London, we have uh, some wet weather mixed with some snow. Highs around 40 during the mildest part of the day. Our extended forecast, that cool breeze continues 65 Friday and Saturday. Pretty good boating weather, though. And then things will become more active, and it gets very wet. Scattered shower Sunday, very wet on Monday. We may see more than an inch of rain out of this, potentially. Uh, and we just had about two inches of rain earlier uh, in the past week tied to the most recent storm system. So uh, it's been a little wet, and we have more wet weather coming. But until then, enjoy the beginning of the weekend while the dry air is here. Overall, a warming trend will follow the next rainmaker. We'll send it back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BF&M Insurance Group. JBM Realty & Associates services all your real estate needs. Our agents have years of real estate experience specializing in selling of properties, renting of properties, property management, vacation rental. So whether you're looking to move to another location, selling your home, purchasing a new home, or a landlord looking for assistance in managing your property, give us a call today. One of our experienced agents will be more than willing to assist you with all your housing needs. Call us on 234-2050 or visit our website, jbmrealtyandassociates.com. At the Bermuda Festival, there's something for everyone in 2019. From international acts, the Manhattan Transfer, and Shaka Khan, to Bermudians Heather Nova and Rebecca Falkenberry. Our plays include A Midsummer Night's Dream, Masterclass, and Nina Simone for Women. There's music for all, jazz, rock, classical, and even a cappella. And with modern dance and family entertainment, the list is complete. For tickets, visit ptix or bermudafestival.org. Celebrating the empowerment of women, she is art. The core of Smart Security's business is providing customers with burglar, fire, CCTV, and other essential alarm services. An important and growing market that offers you the best of all worlds, state-of-the-art protection technology, and monitor your system 24 hours a day, every day of the year, offering you that peace of mind knowing everything you care about is safe and secure. Technology allows residential and business customers to access information and to control their security systems remotely. For more information, call Smart Security Systems at 292-4019 or visit their website, smartsecuritysystems.vm. And you're watching Bermuda Tonight. A prolific offender and outpatient of Mid-Atlantic Wellness Institute, currently at Westgate, who claims to have been diagnosed with schizophrenia, says he has not received any medication for his illness since being at Westgate Correctional Facility. For the past 10 days, Jasmine Patterson reports. 38-year-old Southampton resident Paul Williams was due to be sentenced today for admitting to possessing drugs and drug equipment after being caught on his motorcycle in May of last year. He was found with a metal pipe containing traces of cocaine and possessing cannabis resin and heroin. A judge ordered Williams to attend drug treatment court, but he was deemed not suitable for that program. Williams had failed to appear in court for sentencing earlier this month and was summoned with a warrant on January 21st. The magistrate placed him on remand at Westgate on that same day. Wearing an orange jumpsuit today during this morning's plea court session, Williams told the court he has not taken his psychiatric medication since being at Westgate Correctional Facility. Senior Magistrate Juan Wolf was discussing with the Crown how to proceed with the matter. Williams revealed that he was diagnosed with having paranoid schizophrenia and has been an outpatient at MWI for the past 15 years. Williams confirmed that he uses alcohol, cocaine, heroin and cannabis to alleviate his symptoms. Asked if he had any family members who can assist him, Williams 
Williams said his mother and father are still alive. It was discussed whether Mr. Williams is suitable for probation in this matter, but his probation officer told the court that his client had two previous violations. He vacated the men's treatment center on two previous occasions, both times he relapsed. The Crown said the offences on which he is due to be sentenced ordinarily carry a fine. However, Prosecutor Javon Rogers said they can explore other options, given Mr. Williams' inability to pay a fine. Senior Magistrate Wolf decided to allow Williams to observe mental health treatment court today if deemed suitable or that he has a disability of impairment through assessment and it's not against the interest of the community, he can be admitted to the program. We reached out to the Department of Corrections through the Ministry of National Security for comment on whether Williams Williams has, in fact, not received any medication since being at Westgate. Back in 2012, Williams was ordered to have a mental health assessment after causing $15,000 worth of damages to an ATM machine in Warwick. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Jasmine. In other news, a well-known local philanthropist, Lucy Willits, continues her call for Bermudians to donate sunglasses for people in Haiti. Mike Sharp tells us how we can help. Willits, who has a 24-year banking background, had the privilege of working in Calcutta with Mother Teresa back in 1992. Willits, who is working closely with the Northwest Haiti Christian Mission, explains what is happening in Haiti that requires several sunglasses. Raising sunshades. We want people to give sunshades uh, for Haitians. Um, I was there in October last year, went in with a team of doctors, um, it was about 30 of us, uh, doctors and nurses. Our doctors performed 147 surgeries in four days. The Haitians are losing their eyes. They live so close to the equator and the radiation, ultraviolet rays, um, lack of vitamin E, malnutrition, bad medical care, um, it's causing the Haitians to lose their eyes. Ms. Willett said we must help the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. We take it for granted when we go out and we see the sun, we put a pair of shades on. The Haitians don't have that luxury. So I came home with a heavy heart um, because they were losing their eyes. They were losing their eyeballs. Doctors were taking them out. And I thought, dear God, what can I do? You know, or what can we do? Bermuda, please. Um, I'm asking you if you've got extra sunshades that are hanging around the house, bring them to the garden market on Serpentine Road. Okay. And they are storing them. We are hoping to ship at the end of February. She said matters intensify in Haiti's summer heat. It's always hot in Haiti, but during the summer months, of course, it's worse. And again, the Haitians' eyes are burning up. This is children also. If you have sunshades for children or go out and if you feel you want to buy a pair of sunshades for kids, please let us have them. Doesn't matter the size, how old or anything. Remember, the Haitians have nothing. They need protection for those eyes. Um, I had the privilege of working on campus and um, they were making glass eyes there. I worked with a technician. I have a pair in my bag. Amazing what they can do. And they were uh, putting glass eyes in on those that lost their eyes completely. Ms. Willits is going to Jamaica in July to assist missionary of the poor in Kingston. I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. Still to come, Earl Basin with your sports report. We'll be right back. You can count on us. Value packed fresh Purdue chicken thighs or drumsticks, only $1.99 per pound. Save $1.40 on Bermuda grown cauliflower, $2.59 per pound. Save $1.36 on Schmidt old time sliced butter bread, $4.59 for a 24 ounce loaf. General Mills Honey Nut Cheerios, 10.8 ounce box, only $4.59. New Fresh Pet, pet food, 20% off on all sizes and varieties. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. Let's Talk is back. The TV talk show hosted by Gary Marino airs live at 8 p.m. on Mondays. Real conversations with key figures in public life. Going beyond the sound bites to explore and contextualize current affairs. And there's lots to talk about. Jobs, tax reform, our changing economy, education, crime, and the environment. Discussing the issues that matter in depth and with personality. A new studio, a new look, for a new season. That's Let's Talk. Live Mondays at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV 9 and repeated at 7 a.m. on Wednesdays. And Sundays at 8 a.m.
Turning to sports now, two Bermuda junior equestrian riders returned from Ecuador. It was another tough day on the waters of Bermuda, uh, Miami for Bermuda sailors. And Bermudian footballer Justin Donova is given his jersey number for the Columbus crew. Earl Bazin has it all in tonight's sports package. Two young ladies, Hannah Simmons and Courtney Brumby, represented Bermuda in an international horse jumping show in Ecuador. Coach Mary Frances Gaglio was unsure what to expect with the competition using borrowed horses. Well, it's you're only allowed when you're riding a borrowed horse, you're only allowed six jumps before you actually get to compete. So it makes it very difficult. So it so much depends on the quality of horses that you are given. And we were extremely fortunate. The horses there were wonderful, in great condition, beautifully trained. Um, you couldn't have asked for nicer horses. Hannah Simmons was overjoyed by the experience of competing in Ecuador. It was very exciting. So we had two days of uh, qualifiers before the finals. And um, the first day was great. I went double clear on both of the horses. And then the second day I had one rail. And uh, so there was a little bit of uncertainty on whether I would make it to the A final, but uh, in the end I did. And Unfortunately, Courtney Brumby did not get the best horse for her first round, but did get a better horse for her second round, as she explains the difference between the two. Um, well, I think the warm-up day on the first horse, it went really well. I guess I just didn't really know what to expect going into the main ring. Um, the warm-up in the morning was great. Um, she, I got eliminated, though, on her. Um, the second horse, I had less of a warm-up time on him, um, but he was really game. He was a bit of a different ride for me because he was really big, really strong. He kind of liked me to lift him off the ground a lot, um, but overall, he was really honest. I really had a fun time on him. Bermuda's CC and Mikey Woman competed in the NACRA 17 mixed class and Ben Smith competing in the laser men's class were back on the water on day two taking part in the Hample World Cup Series sailing event in Miami. It was another tough day for the Bermuda sailors, but both boats moved up the leaderboard. Smith came off the water after two races on the day and four in the series in 69th place, up seven places from his day one finish in a fleet of 101 sailors. Smith would finish the first race of the day in the third of the series in 27. He would then finish 31st in the second race of the day to end with 86 net points. In a fleet of 27 sailors, the Womans ended the day in 22nd place, up four places with 71 net points after five total races. The Womans would finish the first race of the day in the fourth of the series in 11th before finishing 15th in the second race of the day. Justin Donawa has been assigned the number 37 as the 2019 Columbus Crew preseason roster has been released. Sage and Harvey represented St. John's Bury Academy at the VITA Distance Conversation Indoor Track Meet. Harvey finished 7th competing in the men's varsity 1500-meter race, clocking a time of 4, 32, 50. The Ariel Ree High School Rugby League continued at the National Sports Center last evening with a doubleheader. In the opener, the Barclay Institute came from behind to defeat Cedar Bridge Academy 35-14. to The Barclay Institute will get three tries from Jaden King, while Kyrie Oldboy and Jakee Simmons added a try each. George Peets kicked three conversions. Cedar Bridge Academy got two tries from Dajay Doors and Marcus Rewan, while Paulo Souza kicked two conversions. In the second match, the combined team of Barclay Institute and Work Academy defeated the Soltis Grammar School 17 to 7. Kieran Burgess etched his name into the Alberta College's Athletic Conference record books as he and his Madison Hat College Rattlers teammates dominated the Embers University Lions with a best rebound performance in league history. Burgess grabbed 31 rebounds. 24 of those rebounds came on the defensive boards against the Lions, setting a pair of ACAC records while also exploding for 41 points, helping Madison Hat College to a 109-61 win. One match was played in Bermuda Bowl Hockey League action at the PCC Hockey Rink last evening. In a low-scoring affair, the Worcester Rails defeated the Las Vegas Wranglers 2-0. Both goals in this game would come in the first period with Andrew Boner giving the Worcester Rails the lead before Troy Dort doubled it. Neither team would score for the remainder of the game. 
Eric Douglas represented Hampton University at the Legends Golf Invitational. Douglas would finish ninth in the seventh school tournament with a two-round score of 13 over par, 157. Douglas would shoot a first-round score of 81, which was followed by a second-round score of 76. Hampton University finished fifth overall. In second spring, senior bowling league action at the Warwick Lanes and saw the league leaders, newcomers, defeat the last minutes 4 to 0. The Drifters went down 3 to 1 to the Blue Angels. The Pin Splitters fell 3 to 1 to the last pin. The match involving the Islanders and Just Kicking ended 2 2. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Thank you, Earl. Well, that's our newscast for tonight. I'm Diane Brewer. Thank you for sharing your Thursday evening with us, everyone. Good night.